So this morning and evening, I will be speaking on the last uh, service on the Lord's Prayer. Part of it makes me want to clap hands because it's been so awesome. Part of it's like, oh man, it was so great, I don't want it to stop. I might just, there's a period after amen. So maybe I'll preach on the period next week. Okay, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> don't, not I'm thinking of, but you never know. <laughs> Thank you, Jan, for that idea. <laughs> but uh, the Bible tells us, and uh, I'm going to read it today since it's our last Two services on the Lord's Prayer. I'll read Matthew chapter 6 and we'll read there from verse 9. And uh, it says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. For thine is the kingdom and the power of and the glory forever. Amen. We'll consider that our prayer also. So we have gone through every single one of these lines. And to, today we end with the word Amen. Now I probably knew this before, but this morning when I was just going through my notes again that I'd made this week and I was praying, I, I know the word Amen, you know, means so be it. Amen. Um, but you know, when I looked at that, I, I thought, you know, I think I've, re I've heard it somewhere. So I checked the, the Greek and I said, yeah, remember where Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, if you're not born again, you shall not enter into the kingdom of God or verily, verily, I say that word verily in the Greek is actually amen. So Jesus was actually saying, amen, amen, I say unto you. So when, when the Bible uses the word amen, or verily, it is a very powerful emphasis of what has just been said or what he's about to say. In this case, Jesus said, you know, for sure. I, it's almost like I promise you, I tell you the truth now. You know, I, this is, this is non-negotiable. Amen, amen. If you're not born again, you shall not enter the kingdom of God. And on that note, let me tell you, there's a lot of religion in the world and in America. But I wonder how many of us have been born again. There's a difference between just going to church and actually being born again. And only when Jesus Christ comes into your soul and he takes the old nature out and puts the new nature in and... Like that song says, born again, there's really been a change in me. Right. That's when you're born again. That gives you entry into the kingdom of God, into heaven, into eternal life. And that's why when I preach in, around the world, I'm not there to convert Hindus to Christianity or Muslims to co convert them to Christianity. I'm there to get them born again. Now, obviously, they'll become Christians when they, you know, obviously, Christianity is not ch cho choosing one <laughs> religion for another. It's accepting the person of Jesus and what he does in your life. So you have to be born again. And how do you get born again? You ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. That's the simplest part of it. And he comes into your heart and he washes you clean. Amen. And he makes you a brand new person. That's, that's being born again. But that's not my message here today. The word amen in the Greek is the counterpart of the Hebrew Old Testament term Paytheia. Sure, I said that wrong. But it means steadfast, sure, certain. It is usually translated amen and sometimes verily of a truth, most assuredly, and so let it be. The word amen is an emphasis marker. It introduces a statement of pivotal importance. That is essential in interpreting the overall passage. So, so when, the, when, when the Bible says amen, it's really a declaration that what has just been said or is about to be said is for certain. And I can tell you the entire word of God is amen written all over it. It's for certain. And uh, 
So, when the Bible says about the Lord's Prayer, we call it the Lord's Prayer. But in a way, I think it could also be called the Lord's Declaration. You know, we have the Declaration of Independence, you know. And, and you know, that was not the only one. I remember, I read, when, before I came to the United States, I was studying America's history when I was still in South Africa. And there was a book, I uh, forget the book's name, but I, I didn't know that, that before the Plymouth Brethren were the first ones, you know, to come to the States from the English side, not to the States, to this new world, this continent, they made a compact with God. That's a covenant with God. And you know how it starts? It starts in the name of God. Amen. And they bound themselves to God and to each other as a body politic. I remember those words. So, so long before... You know, even the United States had this declaration of independence. There was a declaration that we bound ourselves to each other and to God. On the Mayflower. That happened on the Mayflower, 16-something. Joe was still just a kid. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Just Sorry. pick on somebody else here this morning. Amen. So, so the wonderful thing is, when the Bible says the word Amen... The Lord's Prayer is a declaration. So in a way, the Lord's Prayer as a declaration could go something like this. Our Father, you are in heaven. Your name is hallowed or holy. Your kingdom comes. Your will is being done on earth as it is in heaven. You give us this day our daily bread. You forgive us our trespasses as we forgive our trespassers. Those who trespass against us. You lead us not to temptation, but you deliver us from evil. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the power. Your kingdom, power, and glory will remain forever. Amen. So be it. This is certain. This is non-compromisable, non-negotiable. This will happen. Amen. The word, the, the Lord's Prayer. You know, I, I love the Lord's Prayer. But sometimes when you hear them say it, you know, it sounds like everybody's talking to like a, a can bucket. Our Father is hard in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And, and in the end, a kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, and, uh, and then for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, everybody, let's go eat. You know, it's like it's a, a religious sound to it. And nothing bad with it. I mean, that's okay. But I tell you, I think there's more power to that. We can say it more enthusiastically. Hallelujah. And um, now, the, the Bible tells us, I want to read to you in 2 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, I was going to read to you the New King James and then bring to you the Passion Bible, which actually t says it much more easily to understand. But because of time, I'm just going to go straight to the Passion Bible. So 2 Corinthians 15, I'm mean, sorry, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 15 through 20. And this is very important. It says, with this confidence, this is Paul writing to the Corinthians. And he's telling them, you know, I'm going to come visit you. When I say I'm going to visit you, I'm really going to visit you. I mean, he's, he's saying, I'm not mincing words here. He's trying to make a point about what I say happens i don't just play around with words i will really come visit you and he talks about jesus so keep that in mind while i'm reading this with this confidence i'm wanting to visit you before and after my trip to macedonia so that you enjoy a second experience of grace afterward i'm hoping you'll be able to aid me on my journey to israel when i revised my itinerary was i vacillating vacillating or do I make plans with unprincipled motives, ready to flip-flop with a yes and a no at the same breath? Of course not, for God is true to His word. For as God is true to His word, my promise to you was not a fickle yes when I meant no. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and He is the one whom Timothy, Silas, and I have preached to you. And he has never been both a yes and a no. He has always been and always will 
be for us a resounding yes. For all God's promises find their yes in fulfillment of Him and His yes and our amen transcend to God and we give Him the glory. That's a great translation. That is really, I enjoyed that. So basically Paul was saying, he, 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 he said he was going to visit them. And when he told them he was going to visit them, he said, I want you to make sure I will be there. Which shows you that even those times there were people who, who said things and they didn't do what they said. That was a little bit of an a, a adjustment I had to make when I come to the United States. Now, now that I've lived here a while, I understand the language better. But I remember in South Africa, if you told somebody, I want to invite you in church, and, and they told you, okay, that means that they are going to come. But I remember when I was out at a, when I first came, before I even met Heidi, three years before I met Heidi, I was in Minnesota or one of those places, Michigan, I don't know the difference between those places. I have to go visit there again to see what the difference is. I think the spelling is different. <laughs> but I was, I was up there, and I remember we were in an RV park. Me and my Uncle John and his wife traveling the country with an RV bus. He had, he had an RV. And, and he, it was actually an old Greyhound bus that Freddy Fender, who knows, ever heard of Freddy Fender? It was his old bus that he found on a scrap heap. And he said, I can fix this thing. And he did. And he, me and Uncle John dr drove in Freddy Fender's bus all over. And his wife Cornelia, wonderful. Man, she could cook. And I uh, loved them. And their two children were all grown now. Married, children. So, so we, we traveled. And, and uh, I remember we were in an RV park. And uh, we didn't preach at a church that Sunday, so we got permission to hold the service in the RV park. Great. You know, that was great. So I would go out with a little flyer and I'd tell everybody, we're going to have a service this coming Sunday, whatever. And I so clearly remember one of them, to I told one of them about this, and they said, okay. And when they said, okay, in my South African mind, I interpreted that, that yes, they will definitely be there. But I understand now that when people tell you, okay, in America, it's not that they're saying, yes, I'll be there. They're just saying, okay, I heard that you're inviting me. And they're not saying if you, they're coming or not. It's okay, I heard what you, that you're inviting me. That, that, unless I'm wrong, but that's how I understand it by now. Okay. So, so anyhow, everybody say, amen, or okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, so here we are. And... They didn't show up. I was like shocked. I'm like, wow. <laughs> they said, okay. <laughs> but they're not here. <laughs> but Paul was saying the same thing. He said, was I vacillating when I gave you my itinerary? And then he, he's explaining himself to other people how he operates. And then he says, I'm just like our Lord Jesus. And he, he says there, do I make my plans with unprincipled motives, ready to flip-flop with a yes and a no in the same breath? Of course not. <coughs> for God is true to His word. For as God is true to His word. Listen. As God is true to His word. My promise to you was not a fickle yes when I meant no. So we should be like the Lord. When the Lord says something. You know God's going to do what He says. But well, we should be like the Lord. When we say yes we should mean what we say. In fact. I don't even. I never say I promise you. Because it means. And that's okay if you do, but some people say, if they promise, now you can really believe me. But G G I'm going to read to you in a moment, but Jesus said, let your yes be your yes. yes. You know, so when you say something, do what you say. That's right. And I know things happen, you know, life happens, you could not make it or whatever. But when you say something, do what you say, because this is how God is. Yes. The Bible says, as God is true to his word. So that's how God is. Continue to read. Jesus is the Son of God. And He is the one who Timothy, Silas, and I preach to you. And He, Jesus, has never been a yes and a no. He has always been and always be for us a resounding yes. And this translation actually has the word yes in capital letters. Yes with an exclamation mark. For all of God's promises, the New King James says, all God's promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So paraphrase that means, 
for all God's promises find their yes of fulfillment in Him. And as His yes and our amen ascend to God, we bring Him the glory. So we got to be just like Jesus is. And Jesus said in Matthew 5 verse 37, Let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Does that mean that you, when you go to, to jury duty or whatever, that you can't swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? No, I, I don't see any harm in that. Just do it, you know. But even if they didn't make you swear or ask you to swear, or they have a different way now for those by conscience who don't need to want to swear, you know, they, they just have another way of saying it. You can use that one. You know, we should, we should, when people hear us, they should think that what we just said is, is really going to happen. Right. And especially with childbearing. Amen? Yeah. Uh, not childbearing, child raising. Amen? <laughs> child raising. I have, no com I have no experience with my own childbearing. I've been there, and I don't want to do it. <laughs> Amen. The child raising. Child raising. You know, when you tell a child, do something or else, and they do it, and that else doesn't happen, they're not going to take you serious next time. That's why I look at my two young boys over there. Man, I tell you what, they have their moments, but they are very obedient. I, I just speak once, and they listen. Because when they were little, they knew there were consequences, you know? And uh, so, so they knew that from us. And let me just say this to get it off my heart. The same with dog raising. Amen. When you tell a dog, you know, uh, something, stay true to your word. Like I tell the dogs when I say, who wants a snack? I tell you what, they understand American English. I mean, they, they know what I'm talking about. And they run as if it's the last snack they will ever have. And then they come down and I give them a, a snack. And they obe obey. Sometimes all I have to go is, hmm. <laughs> they come from wherever they've been hiding. <laughs> Now Heidi, she's not here uh, this morning, but uh, but but she um, she told me well she's not different. She wants to go let them go outside and do their business. Now she's heard me say who wants a snack, and at first that works. She says who wants a snack. Then they charge down and then she lets them out in the cold snow. <laughs> now when Heidi says who wants a snack, they go hide because <laughs> they know. <laughs> That, that might not really mean a snack. <laughs> How many of you know what I'm talking about? So don't confuse your dogs. On behalf of all the dogs in the world, I plead with you this morning on the YouTube audience. Okay. okay, we're having some fun here today. But let me tell you something. When God says something, we can believe it. Because He has never lied. Numbers 23 verse 19 says... God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do it? Has he spoken and will he not make it good? My brothers and sisters, let me tell you in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you with a resounding amen before and after the statement that God cannot lie. God will not lie. He will never lie. When he says something to you, he will do what he said he would do. That's what makes this book, the Bible, also so unique. Because all the promises of God contained in the Bible are yes and amen. God did not just give us his word and give us an idea that we can... He's going to perhaps do it or not do it. No, my friend, when God says us, he's going to do it, there's no doubt he's going to do it. God will do what he said he will do. God is a God of his word. God is a God of his promises. And God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent of what he had just said. Has he said and will he not do? And has he spoken and will he not make good what he said he will do? Amen. Amen. R.W. Shambach used to say, when God says it, you can take it to the bank. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, my Uncle John, uh, he told me, he, 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 um, 
once got a, a man who gave him a check, an offering of $7,000. That was wonderful. He took it to the bank and the check bounced. Amen. Not a good place to say amen. But man can fail you, but God can fail you. You know, there's some people who give you a check and you, you're going to wait for it to clear before you make your plans. Amen. Then there's others who give you a check and you know it's good. Let me tell you, God has written us a check in black and white and some red letters. And he signed it in the blood of his son. Hallelujah. He made a covenant with us. What he said in the Bible is true. Yeah. That's why hang with the Bible. Believe the Bible. Because if you don't believe the Bible, that's why there are so many ideas about God out there. But my friends, if we stick with the Bible, if we believe the Bible, the Bible is the Word of God, not the Quran, not the Hindu Vedas, not the Book of Mormon, not all these other writings. The Bible is the Word of God, yes. not the, the Apocrypha, not the, the Pseudo Apocrypha. These old writings that were really hoaxes back in the old, old days. The 66 books that you have in your hand here today, 39 Old Testament, 27 New Testament, they have been vetted, vetted by godly men and godly, uh, godly people, godly scribes from the Old and the New Testament. And when they finally canonized this in around 300, 400 A.D., Canonized means that they closed the book and this, this is what was the word of God. It was not like they decided then, okay, we're going to pick and choose what we want. No, at that time, it was universally accepted all around the church and all the bishops and so forth. It was universally accepted that this is the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was already accepted. The Apocrypha, the book of Enoch and all those fanciful stories, they already were known as, as, as non non-inspired, uh, um, non-inspired, but the books that was accepted um, universally among the church as the Holy Spirit showed them which ones were the word of God by much prayer and fasting and seeking God for g generations we now have the Bible, God's wonderful word and all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus my friends that's why the Lord ended the Lord's prayer with, For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. He was saying, so be it. So I close here. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, when the Bible tells us things like, Give us this day our daily bread, Jesus was saying an amen to that. He was promising him, you, he will give you today your daily bread. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the Bible gives us the Lord's Prayer, every one of them is a big resounding amen. God will provide every single need. So Lord, I thank you today. I thank you so much for your wonderful word that I could preach with all my strength, might, and passion here this morning and Lord thank you for the wonderful journey we had through the Lord's Prayer and thank you Lord that it ends with the word Amen which means so be it which really means so it will definitely be and that's why we come to you in faith when we say the Lord's Prayer we come to you in faith when we pray any other prayer, we come to you in faith and we say, Amen. We say, it certainly shall be so. It certainly will happen. God, we are not flip-flopping on our faith in Jesus' name. Forgive us, Lord, when we flip-flop when it comes to, Oh, I, I wonder if I'm going to get through this crisis. Where is God? No, Lord, we don't think like that. We think in terms of, I will get through this crisis. God is with me. God will never leave me. God will never forsake me. 
That's our attitude. We live with a life of amen. Our life is an amen. Because the Son of God gave us an example of that. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I want to pray for your needs this morning. I want to pray for your needs. And I want to ask you to come forward. Stand on this carpet. I'll turn the video off. And I want you to come here. Whoever needs a prayer. And I'm going to put my mask on. And, uh, and then I'm going to pray for you.